Hello pianists, this is part one of How to Play the Beautiful Moonlit Shores written by Randall Hartzell. You can learn it along with me from Alfred's Group Piano for Adults book one on pages 172 to 173. As you heard, it's a beginner level piece which is excellent for a large range of playing abilities as it teaches you so many key piano skills that you can transfer to any piece you'd like to play. For example, it uses the damper pedal. It will lift on every downbeat. It uses some reduction practice I'll talk you through with my Bronson Musical Learning Pyramid of intervals in the left hand and triad movements. It's great to move the hands and not have to watch them so you're developing automaticity of your kinesthetic movements. Stay tuned to part two where I'll show you how to play with that beautiful choreography of wrist circles going over and under. The reason we use that is that way we can play with arm weight which brings in a large dynamic range. So I'll talk you through micro and macro dynamics. So let's jump in with that musical learning pyramid. Let's look at the rhythm and timing category of our musical learning pyramid. It's pretty easy in terms of the rhythm. We're in a common time signature of 4-4. Four, four. If you look through this piece, it uses eighth notes and quarter notes all the way through. At the very end, there's some whole notes and half notes. So let me just demonstrate this, and I would suggest you even just tap your hands along with me and just practice counting. We're going to go measures 1 through 4. We're going to count 1 and 2 and etc. 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and that's the general idea throughout this entire piece. My caution would be to feel the eighth note subdivision to start so you don't rush the eighth note when you have quarter notes like at measure 4. Careful at the very end. I'm going to start at measure 29 to the end. This is where we get into um, half rest and quarter rest. So make sure you count your eighth note subdivision, especially as it's in a poco retardando, a slightly slowing down tempo. Here's major 29. Tap along with me and count three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and off. So you can count out that retardando so it gradually slows down. We're going to move up into the note reading and fingering category of our musical learning pyramid. We'll spend some time here as this is an excellent piece to become comfortable with which octave you're playing on the piano. Also get used to moving your hands and trusting them. So we're going to start with the left hand. As you look all the way through, it uses a series of fifths, sixths, and sevenths, which I've marked on the score for you to follow along with. We're going to start with our left hand on a fifth on C3. I'm going to block those two notes together as a reduced interval. That way you can think ahead to other note reading and expression in time. Left hand to start, three, four, we're on a fifth, measure two, sixth, measure three, seventh, sixth, measure five, repeat, fifth, sixth, and seventh, and sixth. First move of the piece, measure nine, goes up to an F3. You might need to watch, but maybe you can feel that fourth as it goes up. So we're going to start at measure nine with a fifth. Ready? Play. Fifth, sixth, seventh. Back home to C3, see if you can feel that. Down a whole step, B flat two, go in towards the fall board for black notes. Back to C3, up a minor third, E flat three, C3, B flat two, A flat two, G two, and then back to the recap at major 21, C3 again, sixth, seventh. We're gonna go down an octave here, you will probably have to watch C2, 26, 6, C3, 5th, 6th, move it up to middle C and you just shift your body over so you're not crossing too much, C4, and then it's going to move back down to that C2 area. So get that left hand first comfortable, it's really a guide for that right hand as it moves up, so does the right hand. Let's go to that right hand next. So if you look at the score that I've provided for you, I have labeled lead sheet symbols. And I've only labeled for what the triad is. It does fill in with seconds. We're going to start with our right hand thumb on C4. So it's a second, up a third, back down a third. So at the very end of the measure, it's all skips. So it's a C major triad. I'm going to reduce this down so I can get used to where my hands are supposed to play and I get used to the quality of that triad so I can trust my hand. Start with a C major triad, three, four. Measure two, move it up to D minor, E minor back down, back to C, up to D minor, E minor, F major, here it goes up a third to in this A minor position, the pattern changes slightly, it's seconds, 
and then one third at the end of the measure, but I'm still gonna just block the skips. A minor, major 10 is a G, F major, major 12, I stay right here and just play scales down from B. Major 13, back down to middle C territory, down a whole step, back up to middle C, up a minor third E flat, back down C major, whole steps down, go in towards the fall board, A flat, G major, and then measure 21 through 24 is the same as the beginning. So I'm going to jump ahead to 25 where the right hand is going to move down to a C3 and it goes up to a D minor, goes up to a C4 middle C, D minor, same pattern, up to a C5, D minor, and then finally I have a sixth range at the very end, it's C number six, and you're just going to hold that with that tied note. So go through hand separate and reduce it down so you get used to the feeling of those positions and you can trust your hands. And then hands together, I would first start with blocking as well. You're gonna play the left hand fifth, the right hand triad, and you're gonna feel that very helpful pattern that as the left hand ascends, so does the right hand. Measure four as the left hand descends, so does the right hand. We're going up, measure six, seven. Careful, measure eight, the left hand goes down and the right hand goes up. So you want to isolate 7 to 8 where there's that contrast of movement. Measure 9. Here they're coming in towards one another. And then once you get that comfortable, I'd start to play those positions hands together. This will let you focus on that next category of playing. So C major, down to B flat, C up to E flat, C, down to B flat. It's beautiful flat 6 chord down to dominant and it repeats itself so you get the idea of going through that will just help those notes just become really quickly automatized so you can go into articulations and dynamics all right pianists let's move into the articulation category of learning moonlit shores so if i look at the piece the articulation all the way through is slurs which means to play legato and connected with the fingers but it also is telling us groupings of notes as a phrase which we'll use in our dynamics in just a moment so i would encourage you then to play in a non-reduced manner to play it as written without the pedal to start that way you can listen that your fingers are actually creating that legato line so let me demonstrate that in measure one going to measure two careful that the left hand does not sustain that thumb or even the whole fifth position. As that changes the sound, it should just be a singular line that melody goes from left hand to right hand. There's really not a voiced hand, it's the melody shared between left hand and right hand. Once you can get that correct legato playing without the pedal, then add the pedal. This is a romantic style piece, so it needs that kind of resonance in the ring, which will help out dynamics. So I'm gonna add the pedal. You can watch that my foot is going to go up, down on every beat one, with the only exception would be measures 31 to 32, or just holds for two measures. So I'm gonna play for, let's start at measure 13. You can see that uh, pedal lifting with my left hand. Three and four and one, two, three, four, lift. Two, three, four, up, down quickly, up, down, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, back to the top edge, 21. Let me move to major 29 to the end so you can see that that pedal will hold 29, three, four, one, two. Pedal here, one, two, keep it down. Otherwise you'd lose that resonance of that beautiful C major chord at the end of it. Okay, pianists, let's move up into the dynamics category. This is really where I think the fun of this piece happens. That's why it's worth it to go through reduction practice so you can get to this stage of playing the piece. So if you look at the score in Alfred's group piano, it gives you very helpful dynamics, lots of them. Long crescendos, day crescendos, measure 13 to 14, and have kind of more of a hairpin effect of uh, growing through a measure and then tapering into the second major. Those are all great. I'm going to play only following macro dynamics. I'm going to follow it up with what I call micro dynamics, more inflection. You can hear the difference. So I'm going to play um, just this first part with macro dynamics following the large crescendos and decrescendos.
Okay, now I'm gonna play it again. I want you to watch the direction of the notes. What you should be hearing is those notes ascend. I'm going to crescendo slightly as they descend, they're going to taper or decrescendo. So each phrase, each measure basically has hairpin shaping. I sneak in, I grow, and I taper back. And I'll teach you how to play it right after this demo. adding inflection to a sentence versus adding inflection on the word level. That's what we're going to get into next. So a general rule of thumb is to go to typically the third beat or the third measure of a four bar phrase, which works beautifully for this piece. So think in measure one, thinking one, two, three, four. Beat three, where it goes up to the highest E and G would be your micro phrase goal. And then set those measures within a larger four bar phrase with measure three being the loudest. So you peak at a phrase goal at different levels. So you can think least, more, most, bring it back less, measure five, least, more, keep growing, vocabulary or even counting your measures one two three four whatever helps you to pay attention to those micro dynamics but they're set within a macro phrase goal let's also look at the B section at 13 through 20 for dynamics excellent dynamics again from heart soul and Alfred mezzo piano and forte but it repeats three times so I would suggest you decide which of those forte dynamics should really be the macro goal the overall goal of this section and I would look at measure 16, where it goes up highest to the E flat. I'm going to play that warmer with more arm weight. So here's 13. Most at 16. caution on dynamics would be measure 25 to 26. You have this repetitive phrase three times. At measure 26, make sure you become warm enough and rich enough to leave you dynamics to come back from. Let me play it 25, 3, 4. Dynamics is really one of the key aspects of this piece. So even if you're a more advanced player, check out this piece to practice those micro and macro dynamics. These are the same kind of dynamic concepts we had to Chopin and Brahms. All right, let's finish up with the style and mood discussion. All of these dynamics and articulations and pedal we've been talking about have really built up to the style and mood of this piece. Let's finish up with the concept of rubato, which is an expressive tempo that you would use in other romantic composers that I'd mentioned, like Chopin and Brahms and even Schumann. The general idea is that we're going to a macro goal. There might be a sense of pushing to that and then relaxing back. So I'll demonstrate that in measures one through eight. You should hear measure three is a little bit of a push of the tempo and then it relaxes at four and then again push at measure eight. Here it is, three, four.
right, in summary, hopefully you enjoyed going through that systematic approach of learning Moonlit Shures with a learning pyramid. Go through the note reading, get it blocked out so you don't have to think too much about that note reading and get used to those shifts happening in your hand and not watching. You were noticing as I played with those rests in there, it allows one hand to move while the other is playing. So move early, look ahead. This is a great first pedal piece where it lifts on the downbeat all the way through. Micro and macro dynamics is a key element of this piece. Add that rubato and enjoy playing expressively.